Good morning guys, happy week number 12. I can't believe that we've gone on for two months now. Who is Mrs. Consistency? This morning I woke up, I was watching Instagram and people were talking about running and I remembered how much I enjoyed running before. I used to go running every single day and it was that time in my life when I was the fitness as well. And I remember it was so relaxing. Literally, you're just running and then thoughts go into your mind and you just get clarity. And I really enjoyed it because every time I came home, I felt like I had a little therapy session with myself. More determined, my mind is thinking straight, and I set new goals. It was just something I did every single day and I did it for like months on end. I felt so good about myself. I need to get back on this. I said to myself, every morning I'm going to try and do like a 5K run. I don't know how extreme dream that is. I know I'm a slow coach as well. People probably do it in 30 minutes, but it'll probably take me 40 minutes to do 5k or like an hour to do 5k. But we're going to attempt that anyway. I think as long as you get yourself in the momentum and then slowly you're going to build your stamina and then slowly you can run that a lot quicker. I remember I did like a 10k run for charity. It would be awesome to do that again. Something that I can aim towards doing in the future. I need to set up like different running kit for different occasions so that I have no excuses because that's always my excuse. Oh, it's too cold to go outside. If you came prepared, bitch, there's nothing stopping you. And that's what we're going to do this morning. A little update regarding to my eyebrows. I know, I know, it looks crazy and it's really dark. That is part of the process. For the first week before it peels off, it is so dark and so intense and it looks a bit cray cray. It's all part of the healing process. She's given us some cream. She recommends like the wet healing process. You have to apply this three times a day and keep it moist so it don't get dry and crusty. I remember all the other times that I've had my eyebrows tattoo, they never tell us to keep it moist. It was always to keep it dry, avoid water, and it got really crusty and it looks really nasty. With this, it feels so thin and so flat against my face. I can easily just apply the cream because I remember it used to be so scabby. I'm just so surprised that during the whole process, I didn't bleed whatsoever. And I think it's all down to her technique. All the previous time that I've had it done, I've always bled. I feel that the way she does it, because she only touches the first layer of the skin, it makes such a difference. Normally after when you get your tattoo, normally you have like liquid seeping out. I didn't experience that whatsoever. Today we're going to try and attempt to cook a Venezuelan dish. It's one of their famous breads. It's all made by this flour here. It is a corn flour. Oh, no GMO. I don't know where you can actually get this. We've got avocado, we've got chicken, we've got coriander, mayonnaise, and then some red onions. Tonight we're attempting to make this dish here. It looks like a little muffin and then you have the ingredients in the center. Did you know that Coca-Cola does all different type of different flavoring? This is all different type of mixers that you can get for your drink. I thought that there's only like diet Coke and normal Coke and I think cherry Coke, but this is really different. I'm gonna try spicy calls for my name. A verdict on the Coke, not my favorite. It had like ginger, jalapeno. It had a little kick to it. It tasted a bit strange. I'm addicted to Coca-Cola, but this is a no-go for me. How adorable is this? I've got this little mincer from AliExpress, USB rechargeable. It's literally tiny. I just think it's so adorable. And we're going to test to see if it actually works. There's not much movement. Maybe I need to shake it at the same time. A semi-success. It looked like it wasn't doing anything, but look. This is the filling that we made. We've got chicken, avocado, coriander, some garlic powder, some salt and pepper. So if you're using two cups of flour, then you need to use two and a half cups of water, some salt to your flavoring. So this is the consistency you want. First one goes in the pan, second one in. So you gotta flip it up and down, up and down. We also popped it in the toaster and it's done. So it's this famous little patty, cut it in the center. It comes like a little open sandwich like this. You just pop your filling in the center. Mmm. You hear that crunch, guys? It's nice and crispy on the outside. So good. Off to our morning run. This is the second day running. I'm going to do a little challenge where I'm going to run every single day for the next seven days and see if I can feel a difference. Don't take Chanel on running with me. Big mistake. It is so hard running with her on my chest. Just like put her down. She's the only one that out of the dogs that can run. Come on. That run was a struggle. Bad decision to take Chanel with me. Sorry, Chanel, as much as I love you, you're staying at home. I was thinking to myself before this run, well, every single day I'm gonna rotate the dogs. I just have them badged to my chest. No, 
That's not happening. Now I know what it feels like if you're pregnant and you got a big belly like that. It is such a struggle to run, to do anything. I was so tempted to give up halfway and I was like, nah, got to keep on going. Even if I'm walking, as long as I'm putting in my steps, we're going to do it. I want to suggest that you guys do it as well. I'm going to try and do this all the way up until my birthday, which is the 16th of July. And hopefully by then I'll be snatched. Look who popped over just to say hello. I was like working and the next thing I know, ding dong, someone's here. And she's looking snatched and in comparison, twin eyebrows though. <laughs> the eyebrows look crazy. This is a little eyebrow update. Our eyebrows are flaking a little bit. It was so weird today when I was doing my makeup, I was like, wow, my makeup routine has cut in half because I don't have to do my eyebrows. <laughs> I just literally draw the outline, but it's starting to flake off now. My sister has hit 9K on ah! YouTube. Can you believe within two months, I have an additional four, new followers yay and she said <laughs> tell her what you said i said when i hit 10k i am gonna do a little giveaway and twee's like what are you gonna give away and i'm like well i need to look in your stash <laughs> i'll provide the goods for you guys <laughs> she'll take all the credit and i'll give you the goods i love this new youtube life i just feel like it's so rewarding in other ways and it's given me so many more opportunities like friends are messaging me like saying this is the new life people asking me do i want to collaborate and do some clothing and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, oh, I need to run and get this body in work so that I can promote some of these clothes. Do you know that she's doing like 5K runs every day and then every other day she is going to the gym as well. And I'm like, what is this new lease of life? I wish I was that motivated. And this is just all talks at the moment. I've only started two days, okay? Let's not be too optimistic. But I'm saying to them, I'm gonna, I'll try and update them every single day of my run and all that sort of stuff. And then do this as a new challenge so we all can get fit together. That's do you know, the only time I saw her run was today when the ice cream van was outside. <laughs> She's like, oh, quick, we're just going to get the ice cream. This is the bad thing. I exercise and then, yeah, I eat like twice as much. I feel even extra hungry when I'm running. <laughs> do you know my friends though? Because they're all going to the gym and in their group chat they're always talking about like how much they love the gym and all that stuff and i'm just there like all <laughs> my eyes over here and then like now that they're working out they get twice as hungry so maybe that is a thing that can't be a thing for me look at these rolls i was feeling hungry and i ordered all this for myself everyone all these both of these bitches were saying oh i'm not hungry i'm not hungry and when i order it <laughs> everyone is like munching in you know when you order fries and a girlfriend says she doesn't want any this is what we're doing. One person, I ordered a super large kebab, a pizza roll, a chicken and mushroom pie, all for myself. But I knew you guys wanted some. This is why she's having to do the 5K runs. <laughs> I'm gonna be snatched by my birthday, okay? These titties are gone. When um, you lose weight, where do you lose it? Or where do you gain weight the most? I gain weight firstly on my boobs and my chest and my upper bit. Look at all this over spillage, girl. Remember when I lost weight, I lost a lot of weight. My boobs are all gone. See, this is what I, I love and I miss about being skinny when you don't have no tits. You don't want boobs? Well, I want boobs, but I just want a small boob. Isn't that always the way where you have big boobs, you want small boobs. When you have small boobs, you want big boobs. It's so crazy. Yeah. You could never be happy with yourself, honestly. I think people that are like, small chest, they can just look so elegant and everything. And you don't feel like you're full on. Every time I wear clothing, I just feel like, oh my God, it's just too much. Too I much. feel like when I have small boobs, a lot of tops, just look so plain that like you know that they're meant to be like a little bit of a bust or a little bit of a cleavage there. I, I thought her boobs were perfect. I mean, if I had big boobs and my nipples were still pointing up, <laughs> I would be okay. But the nipples is swinging down south. <laughs> now, I want a guy's opinion. You think boobs matter? Are you a boob man or a bum man? He doesn't, there's not one more than the other. I swear he was always a boob man. When you're like, younger, you're more of a boob guy. When you get a bit older, you're a bit more of a bum guy. Can you tell a difference between her boobs? Do you prefer natural or real? Well, her boobs feel soft now. Before they'd be like <laughs> grenades stuck on, you know? Have you done the brum dum 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 one? I suck it with my dick. Hi, I've done that to a few guys. No wonder they ain't been back, guys. <laughs> She's still single over here. <laughs> Don't you guys think it's so crazy how like sex is such a normal thing? Everyone does it, but it's such a taboo thing. No, no one's talking about drugs. sex, money, politics. And drugs. Oh, no one does drugs with this. <laughs> but I feel that sex has become more normalised now. Depends on who you talk to. I feel a lot of people, they're quite crude. I guess so. Like, some of my friends, they're very private. They would only talk about their sex life with me. But say if you on camera, they wouldn't feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Like me, if I was in a group of friends and everything, I would openly talk about it and I wouldn't see it as mm. something that's bad. 
Let us know what your thought is down below. Have you always been quite open with that? No, I was like oh, Virgin yeah. Mary over here. Now I used to think you only can have sex with your boyfriend. Now fucking one night stand is like a common thing. I think now you do whatever you want to do. I feel like before you were scared to be judged. Definitely it was in our culture that we were scared that our mom and our family would judge us. But now I don't feel I care. And I've got to say, like the best thing is moving out and now I have my freedom before. I want to get hanky panky. Run to the car. And most of the guys that I dated then, they didn't have their own place either. Oh, so you're so young. I wasn't young. I moved out when I was fucking 32. But to be fair, social media has changed a lot of the stigma around sex and stuff. Do you like think? That. You've got like Tinder now. Like social media, a lot of people talk about sex on social media. Do you talk about sex with your friends? No, not really. I feel like you have like different types of guys where they probably like lads. Oh like. really? I thought that guys talk about sex and they brag about it all the time. Especially you got a fucking model, a blogger girlfriend, you're uh, like, I'm hitting it from the back, I'm doing it from the front. My friends are not really When they're like, player player, they're, they're the sly ones. I feel like it's not like in depth how us girls. It's just like bragging rights, like that's what boys do, right? No. Um, this is what I imagine in my head. We don't go into detail. But they would say, oh, I'm gonna chat to this girl or whatever. Guess so. I know some secrets, guys, about his friend. What is that? No secrets. What do you like? <laughs> guys, in hot water here. His, his toes are curling. <laughs> do you think if you saw your friend being cheated on, but she wasn't really a close friend, would you say anything? If she wasn't a close friend, yeah, no, I mind my business. You mind your business. If you were a close friend, if like you're my sister or my one of my good friends, I will say. What about your colleague? My colleague, you know. I don't just give a. About my colleagues. Oh, sorry if you're watching. <laughs> it is so troublesome to get yourself involved, and then they think you're lying, you're breaking up a happy marriage. You don't know what's going behind closed doors. They might have an open relationship. Isn't it so sad that we have to worry about if they will believe us or not when we're just trying to be a good person? And especially girls, they are so bitchy. They think you're jealous of me, and especially I'm a single bitch over here. They're thinking <laughs> you're trying to wreck my relationship. Put yourself in that scenario. Would you appreciate a woman coming up to you? She's not that close to you and tell you that. I feel like they need to have proof. You know? They need to have like facts, they need to be a photo, there needs to be a video. And someone that don't know you that well, I don't think they'll go through that extreme, man. I'm like, fucking, who do you think you are? Too much of my time. Take it or believe it. Okay. For me to be a private detective and help you out as well, girl, you're asking a bit too much. I haven't experienced it firsthand, but I know people, like one of my girlfriends, she dated someone. That someone was stalker, he was like crazy. And then this guy, I don't know how he managed to get himself with every freaking Asian chick that's in the block. My friend experienced the craziness. She warned the new girl. The new girl wouldn't believe her. And then you know the crazy guy, what he did was he created a fake profile on the new girlfriend pretending to be my friend. That is when you know it's the real crazy crazy. Pretend to stalk the new girlfriend, <laughs> pretending to be the old one. And then that girl now hates the, 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 my friend. Her dog has a stalker profile too. <laughs> she does. <laughs> and it's named under like a fitness channel or something. <laughs> you find it, let us know. No one would ever associate who to fitness. <laughs> I know, that's a good fake account. Well, every single girl needs a fake account so you can spy on. I'm going to tell you a little secret. The other day I was like feeling so curious. I was like, I wonder what my ex-boyfriend was doing. I haven't spoken to him like 10, 15 years. My first ever boyfriend. <laughs> the one in Camden, if you guys remember that story. Tell us. I just wanted to see what he's been up to. He lost the love of his life. The one who got away. Remember, his, his thing it was called smelly fish or something like that. <laughs> no, Nick <laughs> Mama. What is that? Fish sauce. I remember that was his nickname or username on his profile. <sighs> Try to find that and I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's blocked me. So obviously I can't use my real profile to check, right? So let me go to my fake profile and have a look. <gasps> I couldn't find him, guys. And then all of a sudden, I'm like thinking of his cousins and his relatives and his friend. I'm like, let me type them in and find search a friend for a friend. <laughs> I couldn't find his profile. I used to remember his password and his username after we broke up, yeah, right? I remember what his email address and everything was. And I, and I knew he kept the same password. Even though we'd broken up and I hated his guts, I still went on his email, typing the password. Oh, he still worked. You didn't do him dirty. You I found out he was in a lot of debt. He tried to lie on social media, say he's doing so well, but behind closed door, he's like begging his mama for money. <laughs> like with social media, people can portray anything that they want. I don't know if I should put all this out there. Well, it's too late now. So we have a couple of story times that my sister had. I feel like I need to encourage my sister. We have a couple of topics and you guys can vote down below in the comment section and then we'll do this next week. So we want to do a video of what is our ick. If you guys don't know what an ick is, it's basically things that like... Make, make your toes curl. Yeah, makes you feel like, oh, that's so cringy. Things about someone that will put you off them. That sounds a bit dry now. I took a bite. Like, hey. 
hairy armpits. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are a bit hairy today. <laughs> Another one was embarrassing sex stories. The time my sister got arrested. <laughs> the time my sister got cheated on. <gasps> that could be a good one. Another one about my family's curse. And this happened like way before when my dad was alive and stuff. We had like a proper like family curse. And it's a true story. I was scammed by my own boyfriend. <laughs> I'm trying to think what that story is. I wrote it down, I'm like, I don't know what the scam is though. Next one is my worst ever tenant. I nearly got the sack from work. If any of those story times tickle your fancy, let us know down below. Maybe if there's one that's like the most popular, if you guys can like, like, like someone's comment and then we can see what one's the most popular, that would yeah. be great. You know how much I love doing story times? I've got all the experiences in the world. Your girl is mid thirties, been through life. I feel like my sister's so good with story time because she probably remembers with me if I ever had like a traumatic or sad experience or anything like that my mind just blocks it out and I feel like I'm a person to just like move on to the next thing I don't dwell on things a lot I don't remember I just fill in the gaps <laughs> Just add a bit of drama where it's needed <laughs> Speak a little bit of gossip I feel so sad this morning You know when you have this feeling where you're in denial You know you gain weight but you didn't know that you really really gained weight I was like okay I need to face the truth I'm always in denial I'm like no nah, I haven't gained that much weight girl Reality hits when you pull out the scowl Last year I bought some high tech scowl Basically it tells you the truth It measures your body fat, your water, your BMI It measures the whole shebang I was brave enough to step on the scowl today Because I said if I'm going to challenge myself And say that I'm going to lose weight I need to see figures I'm that type of person that I need to see numbers And number crunch to be able to see a difference Feel motivated when that number starts to go down I am 78 kilogram My BMI is... 29 so just on the borderline of being obese i'm 35 percent body fat this app here tells me how it is Again, looking at this has made me feel like oh back in september 2020 i was 74 kg and i thought that i was already gaining a bit of weight then now i've gained an extra four extra kilo since my last weigh in in september when you look at these numbers it just seems so like impossible and so far away but we're gonna work hard at it it's always true like whenever you're in a good mind space and you feel good about yourself you feel you are capable of anything you feel like you can conquer the world and when you're feeling a bit down in the dumps about your body your self-image and everything you tend to self-doubt a lot and i know that sounds very superficial when it is so true all the times when I think, girl, you're a bad bitch, is when I feel good. And when I feel good is when I'm at a healthy weight. At the moment, I just feel very lethargic. I feel like I don't want to do anything. I always feel consistently tired. And I've been running and holding my phone in my hand and holding my keys. And I'm always so scared that I'm going to lose the damn key. But now that I've got this belt, this will be my accessory. It's just this little bag thing that I can fit in my phone, fit in my key, and it just goes in my waist. A little update regarding to how I'm feeling. This is my third day running. You know what I did last night? It was like around about 12 p.m. and I was like, I'm gonna get myself motivated. I switch out my shoes and put the full works of all my trainers on the main area where I display all my shoes. Drinking my coffee right now. I always question myself whether I should eat something before I go on a run. Your girl gets really, really tired. But I'm like, no, it's not about the pace. It's not about how fast you run. It's about the distance and about the consistency. Oh, also, let me update you on the brow. I made a big mistake yesterday. I don't know what I was thinking. I totally forgot. She's done such a good job with my eyebrows. That I totally forgot that I had my eyebrows tattooed. Yesterday, I was just like in a mood where I wanted to zen out. Your girl steamed up in the shower for a good 20 minutes. And then when I came out, I used a funnel to wipe my face and everything. And I totally forgot that girl, you got scabs on your eyebrows. By then they were like, you know, wrinkly and basically the scabs scabbed off. I shouldn't have done that. Land's going to kill me. I'm sorry, girl. I see the definition there, but they say it gets lighter before it gets darker. I really love the shape. Look, look at my eyebrows. Girl, eyebrows on fleek. One more thing before I go. This scowl is so high tech that it's got an area where it says what your body age is. And can you guess what it said for me? 40. 40. I'm 35. Going through a midlife crisis at the moment and you've increased five additional years to my life? No, 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 girl. We got to correct that. 
I know you guys have always send me lovely, lovely messages and telling me that, oh no, you are not overweight, BMI is not important, this and that. And if we continue to go down this route and don't make changes, you're gonna be like, dun, dun, dun. look back and you're like, bitch, is that you? <sighs> I just came back from my run. I am so tired, but we did it. Pat on the back now. <laughs> you go, girl. Good morning. Ah, rise and shine. We're up nice and bright and early on another day, and I'm ready for my run. Today, I feel very energetic. And this morning, I woke up at like 5 30, and I was like, bitch, why are you up? And I had this feeling where like, I can't wait to get up and run. I went on the scale today. I know, I know, I know. You guys are gonna tell me you shouldn't go on the scale every day and I won't. But this morning, I weighed myself and somehow, overnight, 24 hours, I managed to lose 1.4 kg. Like, how is that possible? I took a dump, I made sure I'd take a fat shit before I stepped on the scale. <laughs> Maybe that's the formula. Regardless of what I did, I like what I saw on the scale. If it's slowly decreasing, going down, that means you're doing the right thing, girl. Well, I wish I took my measurements on Monday when I started this running thing. I've seen the true result of between Monday to Saturday, which is a six day. Clearly, I can't count six day. Six day. <laughs> a ponytail on today. She looks snatched. Uh, today we is a pampering session and we are gonna go do our nails. I feel like it's been so long. Today we only have one dog with us and Romy has been selected to come along on this car journey. Since I got him in January, he had never met Sammy before. And you know, Sammy's one of my good, good friends. She has to meet my fellow little child. He needs to get a bit more acquainted with other people. He's a bit of a shy bitch, this one. Toy was like saying to me, did you bring a leash on him? I'm like, he's a slow coach. You can catch him just like that. He ain't running nowhere. So the only thing about Sammy, even though we love her so much, is that her salon is located in Loughton, which is so far from us, but she's worth the drive. She's worth the drive. She, she's the so one. good. And there's only a few people that I can recommend and I would like say proudly on my social media recommendation. Yeah. One is Sammy, my eyebrow woman. Mm. <laughs> we literally just finish our nails. I need to show you my sister's nails. So pretty. But I'm in love. Can I just say I feel like a bad bitch? We need to have long nails again, but I feel like me. I went for almond shape. Look how pretty these are, guys. Look, it looks like a little ocean river. No, I love it. The gold and the blue together looks so nice. It's just so sophisticated but neutral at the same time. And you know when you have a hint of gold, it just makes it come alive. Let me introduce you to the woman herself. The creativity, she the artwork. The best. I cannot recommend her enough. If you guys want to get your nails done and feel like a bad bitch like us, you need to come to bear nails. Hi. I want to introduce you to my friend. We've been friends for how long now? Oh my God, almost like a decade, I think. It's too long, oh. I'm joking. I agree. She's literally my, one of my really, really good friends. So I thought I introduced her to the camera. <laughs> So we've known each other for such a long time. We haven't seen each other in properly God. the last year, right? I mean, yeah. we've seen each other here and there outside of lockdown, may I add. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this catch up. We're having Indian today, so I need to show you what's on the menu. We've picked quite a wide selection, so I'm pretty excited. So we've ordered some soft shell crab and then samosas. I'm such a pig. Guys, look at this lamb shank and tell me it is really skinny. It doesn't look like this a lot of people on this lamb shank. <laughs> Like I've ordered myself a curry and we've got naan. Ready, I'm taking off. She's preparing herself. Ooh. When the coats come off, the gloves come off. <laughs> she barely touched it. So the definition of my eyes being bigger than my stomach. I look cute today. <laughs> but we are reunited again. She's like, I'm sick and tired of you. Every Saturday, and I don't know why she booked this appointment at nine in the morning. I had my tear trough done around right about two weeks ago. It's made such a tremendous difference to my face. Look how youthful. I'm like a young, fresh baby bitch. I just noticed there's a slight dip on this eye. Can you see it? Yeah, I see the dip. So she's just gonna top that up slightly, and you are going to get some Botox. But I want a little bit more here. When I scrunch, I still have the little nose scrunches. So we're gonna see if we do a little bit more here. I also feel like I just need a little bit of my forehead because last time we just done it here, but now I feel like because this bit's so smooth, this bit is not as smooth as this bit. It just needs to be a baby's ass on my forehead, basically. <laughs> she's so fucking young and youthful. I'm like, I want that. <laughs> 
So I'm investigating Botox as well, my oh. face. Especially that I'm an old hag. I'm so much older than her, and yet she's getting a Botox, and I'm here like oh, making all type of expressions, which is not good <laughs> for me. Prevention, girls. But anyway, we're gonna make our way in now. I barely feel anything, but this little procedure makes such a huge difference. That little filler really does the trick. Made it so much more even. Show you guys the procedure that's involved when you have Botox. So she's just doing little dots. This is where she's going to inject. And it's just little tiny injections. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt all guys. It feels like I'm picking a spot. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's vlog. And I know I've been going through a ton of procedures. But your girl is on a mission for a glow up. And our freedom is finally approaching, so your girl has to look fly. Anyway, if you like the content that you see, ensure to subscribe. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platform. And I'll see you guys next week. Mwah.